Okay, and welcome students who are taking Math for Business and Finance and Math Applications. In this series of videos, we're working through the word problems, the odd numbered problems for Chapter 17. And just a couple of quick things. One, um, I'm, as you saw in the uh, drill problems, if you watch those videos, uh, it went pretty quickly doing these problems. Uh, because basically it's just a formula, finding the information, plugging it in, and doing the math. The hard part is, you know, the repetitiveness of the math, but really there's not much to it. We went through the drill problems pretty quick, so um, I'm expecting to go through these word problems relatively quickly also, okay? Um, so with that said, I'm going to move on, but realize that these are word problems, so, you know, they... You will have to, you know, be doing a little bit of thinking um, and making sure you're getting the right variables. But I, you know, to plug into the formulas in order to, to calculate the depreciation amounts. So, um, you know, if you don't understand something, you know, since I will be going through it pretty quickly, if you don't understand something, pause, rewind, watch it again, watch the previous videos. And if you still don't understand something, feel free to contact an instructor, okay? But I don't expect, uh, you know, between the word problems and the summary practice test for this to take too much longer in this chapter. All right, so let's move on. Let me get my pen here. All right, come on, pen. All right, uh, let's see, it says problem 17-19. Two strong months of manufacturing growth coupled with a decline in the unemployment rate are encouraging signs for the U.S. economy in the early months of 2012. Sharers Foods, part of the $2.6 billion snack food industry, employs 1,100 people in Brewster, Ohio. And so, so far, all of that is just, to me, is just background information. It's really not relevant to uh, calculating depreciation. If Sharers purchased a packaging unit for 185000 so that's the cost, with a life expectancy of 695,000 units. So immediately it's probably uh, telling me, since they're telling you the expectancy in units, I'm going to be thinking units of production as far as the depreciation uh, method. And a residual value of 46,000, so that's my salvage value. Okay. What is depreciation expense for one year, for year one? if 75,000 units were produced. So as you can see, the problem is not telling you what method to use, but by the information that's given, you should be able to deduce that we would be using the units of production because they are telling you units of production and how many units were produced in the year. Okay. So with that said, um, for units of production, Remember, we have we take our cost less our uh, residual value, all right, and that's divided by over the number of units. Okay, and that's going to give us a dollar per unit, and then we take that dollar per unit, and we multiply it by the uh, number of units for that year, all right. So our cost is 185,000, and our residual value is 46,000, and our number of units for the life expectancy is 695,000. Okay, so 185 minus 46 is 139,000 over 695,000. Remember, in the in the numerator, you know these are dollars, right? In the denominator, they're units. So that's why um, we get a dollar per unit. Okay, so 139,000 divided by 695,000 gives us uh, zero, 20 cents per unit. Okay. Now, if we have 20 cents per unit, and it says year one had 75,000 units produced, well, we multiply it by the uh, 20 cents per unit, right? And that gives us a depreciation amount of 
uh, $15,000. Okay, simple as that. All right, next problem. 21, All right, Jim Company bought a machine for 36000 with an estimated life of five years. So 36000 is a cost, estimated life. Um, because they're giving an estimated life means I'm probably not using units of production. Um, the residual value of the machine is 6000 And Okay, so calculate A, the annual depreciation. When it, when it says A, the annual depreciation, I'm um, automatically thinking straight line because if it's the annual depreciation is going to be the same each year and the only method that uses the same depreciation each year is straight line okay and B the book value uh, at the end of year three All right so now it tells us to assume the straight line depreciation so um, I have to actually do three years of uh, depreciation here but it's not that hard because I just calculate the depreciation and it's the same every year so with straight line depreciation it's our cost less our uh, residual value or our salvage value over uh, the useful life in years okay. and that'll give us our depreciation amount all right per year okay. so in this case here we have 36,000 36,000 less um, 6,000 for residual value and estimate a life of five years so that's 30,000 over five which is 6,000 per year okay. so in year one so we calculated the annual depreciation amount right that's this let me write that better that's 6,000, okay, and that's per year. <coughs> Excuse me. So in year one, you know, we're, we're starting out with our uh, cost of 36,000, and we're subtracting our 6,000 of depreciation for that year, which means our book value at the end of year one is 30,000. Okay. Now, in year two, we have we start out with our cost of thirty six thousand, but our accumulated depreciation is the total of all of the depreciation for the previous years plus this year's. Well, at the end of year one, our depreciation amount was six thousand. Okay, so that was year one. Okay, so for year two, we're going to add another six thousand. So our accumulated depreciation is twelve thousand dollars. So we're subtracting twelve thousand. And that means we now have uh, a book value of 24,000. Do the same thing for year three, 36,000. Okay, so in year three, we have to subtract, uh, we're taking another 6,000 in depreciation. So our accumulated depreciation at the end of year three is 18,000. So that means our book value at the end of year three is 18,000, okay? Next one, um, Jim Clinton purchased a used RV with 19,000 miles for 46.9. Originally, the RV sold for 70,000 with a residual value of 20,000. After subtracting the residual value, depreciation allowance per mile was 8 point, I mean zero, 86 cents. Jeez, eight point. Well, man, where am I going? <laughs> anyway, eighty-six cents. How much was Jim's purchase price over or below the book value? Okay, so for this here is a, a little bit more complicated problem. All right, because why? The uh, it says eight nineteen thousand miles were used, and we're looking at eighty cents, eighty-six cents a mile. So um, up to that point in time, we have 19,000 miles times the 86 cents, and that means that our accumulated depreciation it would be 
$16,340. Okay, so that's my accumulated depreciation up to that point in time. Okay, now, so if that's my accumulated depreciation, what's my book value? Well, my book value would be my cost of 70000 minus the 16340 for accumulated depreciation. So that means my book value is 53660 right? Now, it says here he purchased it for $46,900, right? And it's asking how much was Jim's purchase price over or below the book value. So if I calculated my book value to be 53660 and now he's uh, purchasing it for 46900 okay, I'm subtracting those two, okay? Zero six seven six. So uh, he purchased. He's purchasing it for six thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars below the book value. Okay. So real quick here, since this was a bit more complicated, right? It tells us that 19, uh, he purchases an RV with 19,000 miles on it. So that 19,000 miles, you know, is when you think about it from units of production is the uh, depreciation expense on that vehicle. Okay. <coughs> At that point in time, excuse me. And he's buying it for 46,900. So now the question is, is whether that was a good buy or not based upon the, uh, the, book value of the vehicle itself so we need we're trying to figure out what the book value is at that time I mean it was seventy thousand dollars was the original cost and has a residual value of twenty thousand however that twenty thousand has nothing to do with the problem okay remember with word problems we have direct information we have information that has nothing to do with the problem and then information that has to be manipulated. Well, this $20,000 has nothing to do with the problem, okay? Because we're trying to figure out what the book value is. We're not trying to get to the residual value, okay? And then it says, after subtracting the residual value, depreciation allowance per mile was 86 cents, okay? So they've already did the units of production calculation and calculated 86 cents. Now we're applying that against the 19,000 miles that were used. Okay. And that's what, that's how we come up with our accumulated depreciation of 16,340. Right? So when we get that accumulated depreciation, now we have to figure out what the book value is. Okay. So, and remember, we're not concerned about that residual value of twenty thousand dollars. All right, we're only concerned with what the book value is. So we take our cost less the depreciation, and that gives us fifty three six sixty for our book value. But that's not what Jim paid. Okay, Jim paid forty six nine, and we want to know whether that's above or below the book value. And as you can see, it's below the book value by six thousand seven hundred sixty dollars. Okay, so he's basically getting a good deal there. Okay. All right. Um, with that, I'm going to stop and pick up in the next video with the other uh, problems. And again, if you don't understand this, watch it again. Or, or and if you still don't get it, feel free to contact an instructor. Okay.